you probably know all the recommendations that there are for keeping your mind and body healthy. Eat a clean diet, make sleep a priority, exercise, reduce stress. We all know these things, but they're not always easy to do. So I'm frequently asked, what else have you got? Well, here's another one. Learn to play a musical instrument. And I'm gonna tell you why that helps. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Playing a musical instrument is one of the best things that you can do to exercise your mind and improve your overall mental state. Playing an instrument is very different though from listening to music. Listening to pleasant music is great, but it's a passive process that uses mostly your auditory nerve pathways in your brain. So think of it as unidimensional. But reading and playing music involves activation of motor pathways in the brain, as well as the sensory path pathways of auditory, visual, and somatosensory. Somatosensory is touch. So we're talking a 4D experience here. When researchers looked at the brains of piano and violin players, they could see portions of the brain corresponding to hand development being more developed than in people who did not play instruments. The radiographic finding for this is called the omega sign. This part of the brain represents the area that controls the movement of your hand. The right side of your brain controls your left hand, and the left side of your brain controls your right hand. So in one of these studies, they looked at the brains of piano players and violin players. Piano players use both hands to play, and violin players use predominantly one hand, usually the left, to do the intricate work of generating the notes. The right hand controls the bow movement, which apparently is a less complex task. So the brain scan of the piano players showed the omega sign of advanced development on both sides of the brain, and the violin players only had the sign on the right side of the brain corresponding to that left hand work. Why does this omega sign matter? because it shows us that this complex activity actually changes the brain structure. Think about what's going on. You use your visual cortex to see the music and the notes, and then you use other brain structures to interpret those symbols and translate them into notes that are expressed on your instrument. Then you use your hands in a way to create the notes, and your auditory pathway communicates with your higher brain to confirm that you created the note. Then you make a judgment as to whether or not those notes were correct in pitch and volume. That's a lot of coordination and things happening within seconds. And it's a lot of work for your brain, but it's good work. And all of that control and coordination affects the motor development of your hands, but that's not all. Playing music also changes areas of the brain that control behavior and executive functioning like working memory, controlling your attention, organization, and planning future activities. I talk about problems in this area of executive functioning in this video. Executive function problems can hurt you to your core as far as affecting how you feel about yourself and how others perceive you. A quick fix for this is medication like stimulants and antidepressants, but medications come with side effects. So why not address the issue at the brain wiring level? Neuroplasticity is the ability for the brain to change its structure in response to the things that we do. Practicing mindfulness is an activity that improves anxiety and depression through neuroplasticity. I talk about that in this video. An organization that has taken this information and used it therapeutically is Guitars for Vets. They have a program where they provide free guitars and individual and group music lessons to veterans suffering from mental health disorders. They say on their website that they studied a group of vets who attended their program for six weeks, and the results were that the vets experienced the following benefits. Improved self-image, increased motivation, reduced muscle tension, better communication skills, improved emotional release, increased verbalization skills, decreased anxiety and agitation, enhanced physical rehabilitation, enhanced personal relationships. That's a lot of stuff. 
And that's a pretty strong testimony for playing and practicing an instrument as a way to improve your mental health. What I like about their experience is that they involved adults. A lot of the studies that I saw talking about this issue emphasize the benefit of starting with music as a child. The earlier you can start before age 12, the better because you're catching the brain at some early developmental stages. But all is not lost if you didn't start playing an instrument as a young child. Playing an instrument has been studied in the elderly and was shown to increase memory capacity and slow age-related cognitive decline. If you don't have an instrument, this doesn't have to be an expensive activity. You can get a recorder for $9 on Amazon or a $100 portable piano keyboard, and you can get free music lessons on YouTube. So listening to pleasing music is good for your brain and helps relax and improves neuroplasticity. But playing an instrument takes those benefits to the next level. It's like the benefits of compounding interest. The earlier you start, the better. So if you have an anxious or depressed child, learning to play an instrument can be extremely beneficial. But it's never too late to start, and you could still see the benefits to your mental health no matter when you start. Thanks for watching. See you next time.